I discovered a new arithmetic operation that you've seen before. But what does it even mean? And what does it mean to say arithmetic operation? Watch till the end for a big revelation. But let's first start off with what the operation is. If we have two numbers a and b, we define a star b to equal to a plus b plus ab. So for example, let's calculate this for two numbers. Let's take 3 and 5. What is 3 star 5 going to be? Well, 3 star 5 by definition is going to be 3 plus 5 plus 3 times 5. So here a is 3 and b is 5, and you can work out this is 8 plus 15, which is 23. Now 23 is nothing like 8, or it's nothing like 15. So it's not like we're adding 3 and 5 or multiplying them, we're doing something weird to them to get 23. But why should this weird expression be an operation? What do I mean when I say arithmetic operation? So here's what I mean, and you'll see it satisfies all the properties that we know from addition and multiplication. Here's what they are. So first of all, we know in addition and multiplication, we have what is called an identity. So here's a precise definition. If you have the number 0 for addition, if you add 0 to any number, you get back the number. a plus 0 is always a. So we say that 0 is like an identity for addition. Similarly, if you have any number a and you multiply by 1, you get back a. So we say that 1 is like an identity for multiplication. So 0 and 1 are what we call identities for their respective operations. Now what about this operation? Is there an identity and what is it? So we can find that out by solving a simple equation. So if an identity exists, let's call it i, okay, let's call it capital I, we want a star i to be a for all a. What should i be? Well, we can solve for i and figure it out, okay? So I'm not going to just tell it to you, I'm going to show you how you derive it. Well, a star i is just going to be a plus i plus a i is equal to a. We want this equation to be true for all a, so we solve for i. We can cancel a from both sides, and we therefore get that i times 1 plus a should equal to 0, and this should be true for all a. What is the only number that multiplies with everything to be 0? Well, 0. So if we set that i is equal to 0, that is going to be our identity for this operation. So just like addition, it has the same identity as addition, it's 0. a star 0 is always going to be a. You can backtrack this reasoning to show that. a star 0 is always a, so there is an identity. Now, that's familiar to addition and multiplication, but what about other properties? Well, we also have the idea of an inverse for addition and multiplication. So for example, let me erase this side of the board. If you have any number a, you have this number minus a, which you can add to a to get the identity for addition. That's minus a, right? So you can, for example, do this. a plus minus a is going to equal to 0. You can always find that negative number, or the negative of a, which could be a positive number if a is negative. Similarly, for multiplication, if you have any number a, you can multiply by 1 over a to get back 1, which is the identity for multiplication. Now, this, of course, requires that a is not equal to 0. But otherwise, except for 0, you can always find what is called the inverse, the multiplicative inverse of a, which is 1 over a. Now this operation here also has an inverse for every element. And what is that going to be? Well again we can solve an equation and find it out. So we want to find out, we want to find a b, if you have a, we want to find a b so that a star b is 0, because 0 is the identity for this operation. What is a star b going to equal to 0? How do we solve for b in terms of a? Well let's write out a star b. We get a plus b plus a b is going to equal to 0. We need to solve for b so we can work out by isolating to one side we get b times 1 plus a is equal to negative a, and therefore we get that b is equal to negative a by 1 plus a. So this is going to be our inverse to a, it is going to be the thing that starts with a is going to equal to 0, which is our, our identity for this operation. But this is of course not defined if a is negative 1. The denominator is 0, we can't divide by 0. So just like multiplication, it's going, there's going to be this one element that doesn't have an inverse, we have to be careful, so every element has an inverse except negative 1. So that's a little bit unsettling, but it's familiar to us from multiplication, right? But then we have to address the following concern. And that's also important from the perspective of arithmetic operations. When you multiply two numbers or you add two numbers, you get a third number. And if we exclude zero from the numbers, if we multiply two non-zero numbers, we are going to get another non-zero number. So this is what is called a closed system. A closed system is when you take two numbers in the system, you compose them with this operation, and you get another number in the system. Now, if we take the star operation, how do we know it's a closed system? How do we know if we exclude minus 1 to ensure everything has an inverse, how do we know that we take two numbers that are not minus 1, we compose them, it's still not going to be minus 1. We have to check that, and once we check that, we'll get to the last property and prove this is really a system. And I'm going to tell you more in detail about how this is very high-level math, 
but in a very simple way. So what we do is to show that it's a closed system, we have to show that a star b is not equal to minus 1 if a and b are not equal to minus 1. So why is that? Well, let's find out what a star b is. We know by definition that a star b is equal to a plus b plus a b. Let's suppose that it's equal to minus 1. Okay, so if this is equal to minus 1, I'm going to show that either a or b is minus 1. Okay, and that's going to be the contrapositive of this statement. So if a and b are not minus 1, a star b couldn't have been minus 1 to begin with. So why is that true? Well, a plus b plus a b is minus 1, then we can actually write b in terms of a. We can say that b times 1 plus a is equal to negative 1, negative a. So therefore, b is equal to negative 1, negative a by 1 plus a. Now, if a is not minus 1, this is well defined. We can divide by this, but then that will imply that b is negative 1, because the numerator is the negative of the denominator. So if a is not minus 1, b would be minus 1. So that means if neither a nor b is minus 1, this could not have been minus 1. Okay, so either one of them has to be minus 1, and that shows it's a closed system. You compose two things in the system of all numbers that are not minus 1, you get a third number that is not minus 1. So this is satisfying all the same properties that addition and multiplication formally satisfy. Just because it looks different doesn't mean it's not a valid operation, right? It satisfies all the properties. And here's the third property, which is super weird in some sense. It's a mystery. Why does it satisfy this property? It's a property of associativity, something we actually take for granted when we study addition and multiplication. But it's a crucial concept when we want to compose or add many numbers and multiply many numbers together. The property is that if we add two numbers a and b, it doesn't matter if we add it to c or if we add the two numbers b and c and then add it to a. So if you're adding three numbers, we can either add the first two and then the third, or we can add the second two and then the first. It doesn't matter the order in which we do that. Similarly for multiplication, you can multiply a and b and then multiply with c, and that's the same as multiplying b and c and multiplying with a. This is what is called associativity. It's a very important property of number systems in higher math. But it is actually satisfied for this weird operation, a star b. Why is that? Well, let's actually figure that out. What is a star b star c? So first, what, what do we do is we compose b and c and then compose with a. What do we get? We get a times, well, b star c is going to be b plus c plus bc. That is the definition. And now a star b plus c plus bc is going to be a plus b plus c plus bc plus a times b plus c plus bc. And this is actually going to be the same as if we compose a and b and then compose with c. And why is that? So here I'm proving, if you actually haven't seen this before, this is what is group theory in math. Group theory is the study of different number systems in some sense, different systems. We have an operation and it satisfies there is an identity, there is an inverse, and there is also associativity. And these are studied in higher math. So this is a window into higher, like sometimes graduate level math. That I'm giving you in this video, but with simple concepts. And so here we have this expression. Why is it, what is it equal to? Well, it's equal to a plus b plus c plus bc plus ab plus ac plus abc. Okay, so it's all kinds of, it's adding abc, then adding all pairwise products and adding the triple product. That's very symmetrical. So in fact, if we do it the other way, we'll get the same answer. So if we do a star b and then star with c, we're just going to get the same, uh, same process. We're going to get a plus b plus ab star c. And that's going to equal to a plus b plus ab plus c plus a plus b plus ab times c. Right? And now if we work this out, this is going to be a plus b plus c plus ab plus ac plus bc plus abc. Same thing. Same thing. So it's associative. So this is actually what we call a group. It's associative. It's closed. You compose two numbers that are not minus 1. You get a third number that's not minus 1. It's associative. It has an identity, which is 0, and has an inverse for every element, which, was, which we found out at the very beginning. So this is a number system. It's a new operation. So what's going on here? It's something very new, but we've never seen this before. Can we find out these kinds of operations? So I'm going to challenge you. I'm telling you, I said to you at the beginning of this video, this is something that you've seen before. And it is something you've seen before. So why is it actually something you've seen before, but disguised in a new way? Now, drop a comment down below what your thoughts are. What do you think about this operation? What's going on with it? It's also commutative, by the way. It doesn't matter what order you operate. A star B is the same as B star A. So it is what is called a abelian group. But 
what, what does that mean? You know, I'm going to do more videos on my channel. My channel has all high levels of math. Drop a comment down below what you think of the operation. And if I get enough comments and interest, um, I'm going to do another video explaining that this weird operation is secretly something very easy and simple that everyone learns from when they are very, very young, from their four, five, six years old. Okay, and if you think you know why that is and can justify it in the comments, do so. Um, but if you can't and you're curious, drop me a comment. I'll do another video on it. Check out my channel. I've got lots of math, cool math at all levels. I try to train, you know, before you click away, I want to tell you I'm trying to create elite, free accessible math education at all levels to help as many people as possible. High school, college, etc. Help people pass their exams, help people interested in pure math to get into high level thinking. I'm a research mathematician. I spend my time thinking about high level math, solving problems that have been open for many years. And I try to bring that expertise to all levels of math. I even have, uh, you know, math at arithmetic series, adding up one to 100, one to three up to 100, introductory algebra, it's for everyone. So check out my channel. And if you like my content, don't forget to subscribe, like, share with friends, family, students, classmates. And I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Wish you all the best and I will see you soon.